Well, hello once again to you who have been tuning in to Ebenezer's devotional series through the book of Psalms. My name is Cal, and today we're going to consider some thoughts from Psalm 138. It's actually hard to believe that when we first started this series, we would have made our way now almost through the entire book of Psalms. But here we are, with just a baker's dozen to go. Now, have you ever heard the phrase, if I only knew then what I know now? Have you ever used it or thought it? Remember in one of the Back to the Future movies, Biff, the bully, gets his hand on a magazine from the future that has all the sports scores from the past many, many years in it. Because Biff now knows the outcomes of baseball games or football games ahead of time, he places bets on the winning teams and in very short order amasses, well, well, quite a fortune. If you knew then what you know now, you might take some similar steps. For instance, if you had invested money into Netflix back in 2002, the price per share at that time was $15. Now today, 18 years later, the price is almost $500. Or more recently, if you invested money into Zoom in January, before the COVID pandemic hit, you would have paid about $69 per share. And today, they're worth almost $400 per share. If you only knew then what you know now, right? Now, before we get into today's psalm, I also want to remind us that today is September 11th, and it is the 19th anniversary of the infamous attacks on the U.S., but in Western civilization in general, but specifically on the Pentagon and the World Trade Center. That event has forever changed the world, and it highlighted, among other things, the ongoing presence of conflict and battles throughout history and all around the world. Whether they are political or ideological or religious, there always seems to be some kind of conflict going on physically, and certainly there's always the constant spiritual battle. Now, when we read one Psalm 138, which incidentally is, I believe, very strategically placed after the, the difficult words of Psalm 137, we see David as a man longing to de and desiring simply to praise God. Throughout the Psalms, David declares his love for God and his longing to praise and worship, but, but here, there's a bit of a twist. Let me read for us just the first five verses. I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and will praise your name for your unfailing love and your faithfulness, for you have so exalted your solemn decree that it surpasses your fame. When I called, you answered me. You greatly emboldened me. May all the kings of the earth praise you, Lord, when they hear what you have decreed. May they sing of the ways of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord is great. Now the gods, small g, in verse 1, seems to indicate idols and the gods of other nations. So the, the twist in this psalm is this. David longs to praise God with all his heart in the presence of those who do not worship God and who are in fact enemies of David and enemies of God. Such incredible boldness, such, such confidence. But why? Where did such boldness and confidence come from? Well, I think quite simply this. That David knew that one day God, the only God, and God alone would be victorious and would reign over all. One day, each and every one of us will stand before God to give an account and to be judged. Hebrews 9 verse 20, 27 from the message says, Everyone has to die once, then face the consequences. And it reminds us that we have one lifetime on earth to make the only decision that really matters. Will we spend our eternity with God, or will we spend our eternity apart from God? In our court systems, we go by the premise of innocent until proven guilty. But because of the sin of Adam, uh, the sin, excuse me, of Adam and Eve, and because by nature we too are sinful as human beings, we are actually guilty until proven innocent. And the only thing that makes us innocent of our sin is the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ on the cross, and whether or not we've chosen to receive that free gift of salvation. The sacrifice of Christ is the only thing that allows God to declare us innocent when we stand before Him one day in judgment. All you need to do is to accept that gift by faith, and then to make a commitment to living according to the ways of God. You know, one day we will all, stand before our almighty, victorious, and reigning God to give an account and to be judged. At that point, Scripture says that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess 
that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Make that decision today to receive God's gift of salvation and start living for Him and Him alone. Make that decision today so that when the time comes, it won't be you saying, if I only knew then what I know now. Have a great day. For the right use of all you have given Our respect for creation in us be restored And Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer Hear our prayer And we pray for the poor of the and for all those who suffer from hunger and fear, for those who are homeless, for those who